Hey all, how are you? Uh, Marcy Ryder here. I'm actually here to talk to you today about um, proactive interviewing, give you a couple quick tips, um, and just go over a couple quick things that I think uh, every really uh, graduate or associate's degree graduate should have under their belt before moving out um, and starting to interview for positions. So that's what we're gonna talk through today. Um, I have put in the chat, um, if you are live with me and not watching the recording of this, um, there should be a link to the um the presentation that i am getting ready to talk through so um if it's there you should be able to click on that and go ahead and open up that powerpoint to see what i'm going to walk through with you so um let's go ahead and get started if this is uh your first time with me to talk about and look through and um, listen to me talk about some work-based learning skills. Welcome. Um, I am Marcy Ryder. I'm the director of work-based learning here at Cleveland State Community College. Um, and so that I get to deal with all of the things, career readiness, um, anything to do with career readiness skills here on campus. So that might be working with you to get your resume together, um, interviewing skills, of course, but working with social media and job hunting, um, internships, uh, job shadows, you name it. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email address is mreiter, M-R-E-I-T-E-R, -E at clevelandstatecc.edu, um, or you can always call my, uh, my office at 423-614-8718. Um, so that's me. <laughs> Let's start by talking about um, proactive interviewing. Uh, most people will talk to you um, about interviewing and give you some interviewing skills, um, but they don't really talk to you about what really proactive interviewing is, and that's what I really want to focus on today, um, because proactive interview um, interviewing is really more taking responsibility um, to ensure that your interview is allowing you to one really highlight your qualifications um, that you have shown in your resume but also highlight those um, face to face with a person or a panel of people um, so that's the first thing the second thing is demonstrate really a sincere interest in the job that you're applying for you're interviewing for if you don't show that interest, um, that's not gonna allow you to kind of stand out and make yourself the perfect candidate for the position. So I wanna give you some tips on that, as well as um, really how to convince whoever it is that you're interviewing with, whether it's one or two or 10 people, um, that you would make really the most significant contribution to the company that you are interviewing with. So um, we're gonna figure all those things out today quickly um, and go over and give you some tips on those things, but remember, your main goal when you're interviewing is to really make you, make that interviewer or interviewers um, want you on their team, want, want you to be the person, to choose you as the person um, over all of the people that they're interviewing. So um, that's what we're gonna work on and kind of move forward um, as we move along. So with this um, presentation. So first thing I wanna talk about is kind of, and what, how I kind of narrow it down is the, pre-interview, what to do and what to expect before interviewing, um, what to do during the interview and then kind of what to do after afterwards so that um, you can kind of see where we're going if you happen to be taking notes um, over what we're gonna discuss today. So the first thing I talk about is really interview preparation, um, what it looks like before you even step foot into that door um, of wherever it is that you're interviewing for. So the first thing, make it easy for inter any person that's interviewing you to contact you to schedule that interview. Um, if you have a phone number that's out of, um, out of uh, if it's out of service or if the voicemail's full or if it's um, you don't have your voicemail set up, it makes it really hard for that interviewer to contact you one-on-one -on -one, as well as if you don't have um, some companies are moving towards texting to set up interviews. If you don't give them the okay to text you um, on your resume by kind of putting in parentheses text okay, which um, I can link back to our resume, my resume workshop and give you more information on that. Um, but if you don't have that on your resume, they're not able to text you to set up that interview. So um, make sure that your, your voice message is set up. There's no crazy ring back tone that's going on. Believe me, as a recruiter, I've heard Every single thing from classical music to hip hop to country to you name it, I've probably heard it. When you're searching and you are literally in the middle of sending out resumes and setting up interviews for yourself, hopefully, go ahead and just take that ringtone back um, off uh, the, as an option. Uh, really, your voicemail should just be pretty simple and professional. Um, and if you can't, if you can't make it that way, um, or you feel like you just keep uh, kind of messing up when you're doing that recording. I've done that a million times myself. Um, they, most companies have just a basic, you've reached 
blah, 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 leave a message, go ahead and leave that one on your voicemail um, because that'll allow you to seem a little bit more professional that way. Um, so that's the first thing when you are, before you start your interview. The next thing, and this is a pretty big one, is I tell everybody to research the company. Um, the reason I say to do that is because that's going to make you stand out and make you seem as though you have done your research um, to answer questions that they might have, to see how you fit into their culture, um, all those things that you can actually make a really good decision to make sure it's the right company for you as well, because you're not just being interviewed, you're also interviewing them to make sure that it's a good fit for both of you, because you don't want to work somewhere where you're going to hate it. Um, I can tell you, I come to work every day because I like to work. I like what I do. If I didn't, it would be a struggle to come in and go to work every day. So make sure you're researching that company so you can also interview them. Uh, it's very simple. A lot of, there's this little thing called Google these days um, that you can look up pretty much any company and find out all kinds of information. Um, as well as I will plug my next workshop that's coming up in a few weeks. Um, the social media job hunting uh, workshop is coming up and you will see it across campus and in newsletters and things. But I will tell you that um, in that workshop, we talk about one of the social media websites named glassdoor.com. That's a really good place for you to go and kind of see what employers or past employees um, have, have been saying about the company and give you some real life feedback about it. Um, I can tell you like, uh, I don't know, if, if, if it's a very loud company and you're going to be working on the the company floor, the manufacturing floor, um, a lot of them will tell you that it's loud or um, if they have, or they're going through changes right now with management and it's a kind of odd period in time for a company, you'll hear that on Glassdoor. Um, but the thing I will tell people, especially not just on Glassdoor, but other, other places that you might research the company at, be careful who you're taking that um, information from uh, because I can tell you word of mouth from somebody that's unhappy so such as an employee that might have gotten fired um, would be a lot different than somebody that has been working there for 20 or 25 years so just be careful where you're getting your information from but the more you know about the company the better to give you an idea of that is uh, I had an intern a couple uh, years ago he was on linkedin.com and he actually had started following one of the local companies here in our area, um, just to kind of, you know, he would, he had started following a lot of companies in the area just to see what was going on, if there's any openings or anything. Um, and we had an internship set up, an interview for an internship at one of the local companies. Uh, and he had gone on LinkedIn and uh, he was just searching through his news feed and he saw that the local company uh, was actually it's a pretty small company at that time, was buying a very large company um, in their their arena. So um, one of their competitors. So he used that to his advantage when he walked into that, that um, interview for that internship the next week. Um, it was one of the main questions he asked, one of the very first things he asked the company, and they were very impressed by that. Um, and so he was actually the one that was offered that position because of that little simple um, extra step of taking some time to research that company. So always look into what you're, uh, the company that you're research, you're walking to interview in. Um, so so first, make it easy to contact you. Start researching the company. Third, um, mentally prepare for the interview. I can tell you um, interviews are stressful in general. And so people just get very, very nervous and anxious anytime an interview, the word interview comes up. What I tell all of my students and any person I've ever worked with to recruit for a company is mental preparation is the number one thing that will either uh, make you or break you. And what I mean by that is before you walk in any door, any factory, anywhere to interview, um, make sure that you take a step back. Take a step, take a moment, breathe. Um, I know that sounds silly, but breathe and exhale. Because the, I always tell them the world is not going to end if you did not get this interview, if you did not get this job that you're interviewing for. There's another one around the road. Um, things will happen. It is okay. Um, but if you can go in thinking positive and making sure that your brain is in a positive frame um, because you've done your research and think of all those things that you've prepared, um, then you are going to be much more confident, which is the number one thing that the interviewer wants to see is someone that's confident uh, and can give them their answers quickly. So um, mentally prepared. Think of it uh, definitely from a proactive stance, that interview, rather than a reactive. You're not just reacting to questions they ask you. 
you are absolutely prepared because you've been very proactive on researching and getting yourself ready for that interview. Um, so you're ahead of the normal person coming in to just react to interview questions. You are ready and you're, you're going in thinking positive and being proactive. So that's definitely the, the fourth thing I always tell people. And then the last thing about interviewing preparing is um, one of the last things I'll tell you is consider really what experience or different skills or um, anything that you really want to highlight about you. This is um, interview preparing is when you want to be, you want to know what you can show and what you can highlight that is going to sell you. So if you are applying to make uh, McDonald's, let's say, um, and you are really great and you've shown tons of customer service skills before, really anywhere, not just McDonald's, is going to like customer service skills. So if you can highlight those customer service skills in the interview when you're explaining things, that's going to allow them to say, oh, well, that's awesome. That's exactly what I want for my company. Without saying that out loud, they're thinking that in their head. Uh, so obviously, definitely look at and figure out which skills and expertise you have that you want to highlight for the position that you're interviewing for. Um, but also be prepared for those obvious questions. I like to tell people um, the more you practice those obvious questions, that is kind of like the every day, every interview, you'll get kind of the same question, give or take. If you have practiced those, you will be, they will just flow for you. So I always tell, um, you know, like my husband, I mock interview with him a lot or um, different students or different faculty or um, colleagues that I have. We'll just practice with each other um, some basic interview questions every now and again. And the reason for that being, it's just like anything you do in life. Like if you have a sport that you play, um, if you don't practice, you're not going to continue to be good or get better, right? Um, I always say uh, Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods, they didn't own their sport and weren't the best in their sport at that time because they didn't practice. Um, you know, Michael Jordan was always, probably still to this day, is continually practicing shooting hoops and, you know, running up and down the court and um, different drills and things of that sort. And the same with really any um, sports player. It's a good way to use that analogy. But um, if you can practice your interviewing skills, they're going to come easier for you. It's going to be more, much more simpler for you to um, just give those answers when you're ready for them. So, um, prepare, get those obvious questions uh, prepared for yourself and practice those. If you prepare uh, a list of your own questions um, that you have for those, uh, that company, that's going to help you with that confidence. I go back to that confidence, that ease and that um, feeling positive and mental preparedness as well, uh, because then you don't have to just think on your feet. There's so many times as an interviewer, I've, you know, one of the last questions I say is, do you have any questions for me? Um, and usually people can't come up with at least one question. Um, it's kind of a red flag for me. So if you can prepare some questions beforehand, then you're gonna have something to ask them. Um, and I always tell people, take a portfolio, and I know this is horrible and I forgot to pull mine out, so I'm gonna scoot over here um, across my office, I apologize. But uh, this is one, just one example. This is what, um, it's just a, literally a leather portfolio. Um, it's just something you can buy at a local office. I think they have, even have them at Walmart and Target. Um, but this is something that I carry with me um, in my interviews because it's simple and it usually has a pad of paper where I can write down those questions that I was just talking about. Um, and, and I don't have to always remember what I was going to say or what I was going to ask. So if you can get yourself one of these, I highly recommend it. When I come back to attire and things to wear during the interview, I'll come back to this um, and talk about it a little bit more. But this is definitely this. It's called a portfolio. It's the easiest thing you can bit you can get and really invest in for interviews is what I'll tell you because this is where you can keep your secrets. If that makes sense. Um, beforehand, also this is a really great place you can take um, and go back to my workshop, my resume workshop. I always say bring resumes with you with on resume paper. Um, this is where you can actually keep those resumes in a nice clean fashion as well so that if you walk into an interview and they don't have your resume you can offer them your ref, your resume and reference sheet um, to kind of look through as they're asking questions as well um, so those are some quick prepared things to do before you prepare um, as you're preparing for your interview 
The other two things um, I will talk to you about quickly is arriving on time. I have always said that if you're 15 minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. Um, I think that was a quote by some coach. I cannot remember, but um, I've always grown up that way. And it's come to my help me, especially in the interview process. So when you're interviewing, what I can tell you is always try to plan it to arrive 15 minutes early. The reason I say that is for one, it's going to show that employer that you were interviewing with for one, that you're going to show up on time and early to work, right? But it's also going to allow you to you the time to remember when I said, before you walk in that door, take a breath, it's going to allow you to do that. Because believe me, I've been in such a situation where, uh, you know, I was interviewing on the 10th floor and the elevator was out and you had to walk up the stairs and you're like, <gasps> I'm dying, I can't breathe, right? <laughs> right? Um, you want to be able to take that breath. And if you plan early to arrive early, you can have the time to get to the 10th floor without the elevator working um, and get a breath before you start into that interview. Um, I know that's an extreme example, but it does allow you uh, to get a good visual of why uh, planning to come, come in early really can help to be, to be honest. So uh, be there early, at least 15 minutes. Um, and the next thing I'm going to talk about, and I said I was going to come back to it with this portfolio is the attire. Um, so what are you going to wear for that? Um, interview. And I will say that you want to think you want to be an appropriate interview tire, attire or appropriate clothing for interviews. And so people ask me all the time, um, what is appropriate interview attire? Um, and so my question, I never answer that until I always ask, what job are you applying for? And what are you interviewing for? Uh, because I always tell people you would rather be overdressed than underdressed. Um, but if you can know the culture and what that company looks like um, and what most people are wearing, the more comfortable you'll be. So if you're going to, uh, just to give you an example, like if you're going to a construction company to interview, right? And you're interviewing for a forklifting position, right? But you're in a three piece suit, it might look a little bit odd, but I'd rather you be in a three-piece suit than be um, completely with holes and everything in your clothing, right? Um, so that's why I say that the position you're interviewing for does have a little something to do with it. But what I will tell you is don't have holes in your clothes, girl or uh, female or male, no, no holes, um, no um, strong scents. I will tell you that um, either man, either cologne or perfume, I will tell you people get offended by that and it can really um, affect some people. I know, I know one person in my life actually um, has to go straight and get an allergy um, shot when that, when she's around really strong perfume. Um, so be careful with that. Make sure you're clean. A uh, big sign of how well you take care of yourself is nails. If your nails are dirty, believe me, you're going to be shaking someone's hand. Um, and we're going to get to that in a second. But when you're shaking someone hand, someone's hand, they're going to most likely see what your nails look like. And if they're dirty um, or your hands are super, super greasy or um, just dirt everywhere, then it's going to be a little bit of a turnoff for um, that interviewer. You can wash your hands before you go in and take a shower. I know that seems very elementary, but um, your scent to someone might, might, not be very pleasant um, to some people. It just might not. So make sure that you're taking your taking a shower before you go into an interview. Um, even if you think you smell rosy and lovely, uh, make sure that you're definitely taking a shower before you go in. And with that attire, make sure it's pretty simple. I always say when it comes to your attire or how you do your hair or whatever you're wearing or um, accessories you have on, such as jewelry or shoes, um, Keep it as plain as possible. I know I hate that because I'm, I, as you can tell, I like to wear color, um, but, and like to make things my own and make my own style, right? Um, and again, this is position by position because if you're like a hairstylist and you're applying for a position in a very trendy, up-to-date salon, might have something, you might look different, right? Um, but I'm just telling you in general, try to be plain. And I know that sounds so boring, but the more plain you are, the less opportunity someone has to take a first impression the wrong way about you. 
Um, you can never, ever, ever take a first impression back or get a first impression back. So I don't want a necklace you have on or long earrings or um, if you have some crazy shoes on or if you have a big, huge belt buckle that says something crazy or a hat that says something. I don't want that to um, throw you out of contention from the very beginning. So go plain. Just stay as plain. If it's something that you want to reach out to me and say, hey, uh, Ms. Marcy, this is what my outfit looks like. Do you think this is going to be okay for this job interview? Absolutely do that. I'm happy to walk through you through that with you. If not, if you don't have something that you feel comfortable that you could wear for a job interview, please come see me um, on the Cleveland campus. I have stuff in my closet that I try to keep um, for interviews if somebody doesn't have anything. So please reach out to me. I'm happy to walk through that with you as well. Uh, but definitely dress, just try to keep it plain and simple. Um, because like I said, you always want to make a positive first impression as we move into kind of what to do during the interview, right? Like basics of the main interview. Um, you can prepare by getting yourself ready and dressed appropriately. Um, but that can definitely hurt a first impression if you don't take that into account. So your first impression is your first impression. Um, and I'm going to use this example of one time when I was in a position and I was interviewing um, for someone underneath me and um, a role that was underneath my title. And so um, it was actually, I was working as an admissions, a director of admissions, and there was somebody coming in to interview for an admissions position. And my, um, I was on a very small campus and the campus um, security guard called me about 15 minutes before the interview uh, was supposed to begin. And he said to me, because we know when people, it was a small campus, you knew when different people were coming on to the campus um, parking lot that something was going on. And so he knew I had an interview that day. He was just kind of on the lookout. And he had called me, like I said, about 15 minutes before the interview was to start. And he called me and he said, hey, uh, Marcy, I just want you to know that this lady just pulled in. I think she might be your interview in a couple minutes. I just happened to walk by her car because she was pulling into the spot that I was walking near. And I noticed how dirty her car was on the inside. It was full, it was you know, full of trash and just up to the rim with uh, just dirty stuff. And I was like, oh, wow, well, thanks for telling me, you know, didn't think, really didn't think too much of it. Um, but when I looked back after the interview, I thought to myself, that was really my first impression of that person. Um, and it kind of, it set the tone for my interview without her even knowing um, that she didn't really do anything. Um, so it was just a basic negative first impression for me uh, that could have easily been fixed. And I know I'm not telling you to clean your car out before you go to an interview. That's what I'm saying. I'm just giving you an example of how something very simple could take that first impression from you without you even knowing. So make sure it's a positive. Um, I, I did say you're going to be shaking hands. Yes, shake hands. Even if there are 10 people that you're panel interviewing with, make sure that you're shaking each one of those hands. And don't make it like a grandma shake where you're like, oh, I don't know. Don't make it dainty. And don't make it like where you're going to break my arm. Just make it a simple, confident handshake. It doesn't have to be super long. It doesn't have to be real short. Like, just make it a very confident, quick uh, handshake. Uh, because if you don't do that, um, it's showing a little bit of weakness or inconsideration. A lot of people could take that in different ways. And now I will tell you, I've been in many situations where somebody's like, no, I, I, I don't touch hands. That's fine. You rather be fist bump or give an elbow, bump, whatever it might be, but at least offer your hand to, to shake somebody to introduce yourself. Um, and greet your interviewers, you know, say, introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Marcy Ryder. Nice to meet you. Simple stuff, right? Um, and that will act absolutely help you, for one, be proactive and feeling like you're a little bit more in charge of that interview um, because you have taken that lead to say, hey, this is who I am. I'm confident. I'm interested in this job and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, and it also helps you to, for one, begin your eye contact with a person. Uh, the more eye contact you have with someone, the better and more confident you'll seem. I will, I tell everyone, having a one-on-one -on -one interview, like if you were just interviewing with me, that would be one thing. 
Uh, but, and of course you can easily make contact with me, eye contact with me. But if you are interviewing and it's much more common these days to interview with a whole committee or a whole panel of people, if you are just talking and making eye contact with one out of five people, it's definitely going to make you seem less, less confident in that you don't really care what everyone thinks. You're just trying to tell one person what you think. Okay. Um, and so maintain looking around. It's, it's even hard for me to do on this, on this video. I will tell you as an example, because where my eye goes to is not where the compute, the computer's web um, cam is. And so it looks like I'm not looking at y'all in the eyes. So that's why I keep going back and forth. And it's just something as simple as that, that will drive interviewers crazy. Um, but most definitely will show them um, that you're not wanting to connect with them. If that makes sense. So uh, eye contact is ideal. Make sure um, if you're on a panel, I tell people try to find that like motherly figure or fatherly figure that you like have a connection with and make that like your person that you always go back to with your eye contact that you're talking to and then carry on and, and look at everyone that's in the room um, because that'll help you feel more comfortable as well. Um, so pretty simple stuff. Um, first impression, shake a hand, seem confident and maintain good eye contact. Uh, then what I will tell you is when you're in the midst of your interview, the one thing, the two things, I guess I should say that I want you to remember are you need to always be prepared, which you should have already been prepared because we talked about it on promoting yourself, talking about your skills, um, your experience, any accomplishments you've had, um, any like attributes that make you person, professional attributes that make you the person for the job. Um, you are selling yourself. You are stressing to that team or that interviewer that the value that you are bringing to that table, right? Um, that's what you want to promote. And that's how you want to promote yourself and sell yourself. But you also want to use as many examples as you can to really accentuate those points that you were just talking about, right? So if you had, um, uh, you say that you are really great with time management, that's one of the skills I want to tell you that I'm really good at. Um, and I want to tell you about why I really feel like I'm good at time management. There was one time uh, where there was a project due within a week. Uh, it, it probably should have been given about a four month uh, due date, but I knew I was crunched for one month due date. So these are the things I did to make sure that that um, you know, original four month moved down to a one month project was done and turned in within time and then give them some examples, right? That's just an example. It shows that you can actually back up what you're saying. So the more examples you can have um, thought of for things that you're promoting yourself with, the better. Um, and that's why I always tell my students, make sure that you're making note of if you've shown initiative somewhere at work. Um, or on your internship or in a classroom, make sure you're making note of that somewhere. Uh, if you have learned about uh, customer service skills or how to work with a team, um, those are perfect things. There's so many teams that you're on during college, uh, you know, that work, working on team projects and things. Those are perfect examples you can use when someone talks about, um, you know, when you're talking about, yeah, I'm a great team member. Uh, these are things I've done in my past in this project and this class project. Uh, I was on a team of four. This is what I contributed that team. Um, just shows that you can back up what you were saying, if that, if that helps a little bit. So pretty basic stuff. Uh, and I talked about some basic, uh, knowing some basic questions to think through, to have ready for yourself. Um, I try to go through a couple of those with you. Um, they always usually start with, and I do this every time I'm out here view, view someone um, lately is, you know, tell me about you. Let's talk about you. Um, tell me about yourself. That's kind of how any typical interview starts. Um, what I want to tell you and give you some suggestions on with that is make sure that you're telling things that are not going to knock you out of contention. So um, if you have kids, I try to, this is what I'll tell you. I try to leave as much personal um, information out as I possibly can so that no one can judge me based upon if I'm a new graduate, if I'm a mom, if I'm uh, a sports player, whatever I might tell them, five kids, um, 
uh, Mary, I don't want anyone to judge me upon whatever it is that my life contains. Um, so I just tell them pretty much my, if you go back to my resume workshop and you watch that video, I usually just give them my summary of qualifications, which is the very first thing on my resume. I kind of have that as my elevator pitch um, and, and where I start with. So mine is something to the effect of uh, I'm in, uh, I'm, what does mine start with? Sorry, it's been a while. Uh, I'm a professional educator. I've worked in the field for this many years. Um, in those years, I've worked with this, 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 and this. Uh, and I find that I'm really proficient at this, this, and this. And then I just answer those things, right? Because those questions that are coming, they're going to want to know what my strengths and weaknesses are. That's usually the next thing they ask me. So while I'm telling me, telling them about myself, I kind of answer those questions. So, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a professional educator. I feel that my strengths are um, this, this, and this. And the reason I feel that is because of this. Um, I do think I might have some you know, work to be done still, or maybe kind of my weakness. I don't like to think of weaknesses. I'm a positive person, but um, maybe my weakness is here, but I kind of think of that as a positive. So um, I answer that in the tell me about yourself question. But when it comes to your strengths and weaknesses, if you don't plan to add that in when you're talking about yourself, when they ask you those, um, have those ready, figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. I always I try to think positive. I try to stay away from negativity. So um, when people ask me my weaknesses, it like irks me. I'm like, I don't really want to tell you what I'm not good at. Um, no one wants to talk about what they're not good at. Um, but if you can find something that might be a weakness that you could turn into a strength or you have turned into a strength in the past, that's what I would use as your weakness. And if you can continue to have one, uh, the same one that you go to over and over again, then you're going to feel more comfortable when asked that question. So. Um, I'm trying to give an think of an example. If you ask me what you know, what are your weaknesses? And I said, you know, I'm really overly organized sometimes, and I find that that might be um, one of my weaknesses because I do take you know some extra time to continue with um, to be that organized. But I also have to think that that is a positive um, and a strength for a company because if I am organized, then I, I'm going to be able to get things done in a more efficient and effective manner. So you see how that's a negative, yet it's a positive. If you can find something like that, better for you. Um, and then they're always going to ask you why you're interested in the job or what makes you the best candidate for the job. Get that a lot. That's where you resell your skills and the things that you have told them that you're amazing at. That's where you are going to really shine and all those things you prepared um, before the interview, you're going to be able to tell at that point. So just some basic typical questions that I like to explain with you. Um, just remember no interview. I've literally been on probably hundreds of interviews or given hundreds of interviews, um, probably thousands, I feel like at this point. But um, just remember no interview is gonna be the same. Um, you just have to remember the employer is really asking you in any interview that you're going through, um, do you want this job, this job specifically? Can you do this job? Um, are you a self-reliant employee and are you going to fit into the culture here? And that's what I was going back to the beginning. You have to ask them as well. If you walk in and you don't see anybody or make a connection with anybody um, that you feel comfortable, then I, you need to question that, right? Like you need to ask them, what is it like working here? Who, you know, what does the typical employee look like? What is the typical employee um, you know, how do you fit in with your culture here? What is, what do you see that being like? Do people feel comfortable here working here within six months? Ask those hard questions because that's going to make you stand out because that's going to allow them to see that you do want to know if you're going to fit in there because they want to know that as well. Um, so ask those questions. A lot of people forget that, but um, definitely ask those questions. So we talked about kind of pre getting prepared during the interview. Uh, some quick final words and, you know, the end of the interview process is always just be genuine, be yourself. Don't try to put on this like show or um, somebody, be somebody that you're not. That's not who they want. They want to see who they will be hiring. So really be genuine. If you're a quiet person, um, you know, be quiet, but sell yourself. If you are an outgoing, energetic person, be outgoing and energetic, right? Be genuine um, and always communicate whether you're interested or not interested in the job, right? Um, if you end the interview and they don't know if this is a right fit for you, how are they gonna 
want to know if they want to offer you the position, right? Um, so I always tell people at the end of your interview, uh, make sure to ask them, um, tell them, you know, this is a really exciting opportunity for me. I think I'm, I, it feels like I'd be a really good fit for this position. Um, and remind them because of this, this, and this. Um, what are your next steps, right? To figure out when are you going to, you know, make decisions that will allow them to answer a question for one, but for two, for you to let them know that you are interested in this position and you would love to take this position if they did offer it to you. Um, and remain positive even after you leave the doors. Always remain positive. Don't ever badmouth either former employees during the interview or that employer or that company um, after the interview because that can come back and haunt you, especially if you live in um, a community such as this um, where, you know, Everyone knows somebody that might know somebody that might know somebody. Um, and so if you're bad mouthing employers or companies, it'll get back to somebody at some point. So um, be, sh be careful with what you're saying with that and remain positive. But stand out from the, the crowd. Uh, really don't answer just a yes or no question with a yes or no. Um, give some examples and, and get your point across and, and give, give that extra answer if that makes sense. But try not to ramble. Um, you know, that's their time is very precious. So don't ramble too much, but definitely get your point across and sell yourself as much as you can. Um, and prepare those questions so that you have them ahead of time and you feel comfortable to ask those. But um, the one thing I will tell you that will make you stand out above all um, is a simple quick thank you note. Uh, just thanking you from, from their time for their time um, or his or her time. Um, and kind of what the next steps are, if there's anything that they still need more information or reach back out to you. Um, even if they say they would like to make that decision today, uh, go ahead and just send an email thank you. Even if it's not a handwritten thank you letter sent out, um, an email that says thank you for your time today. Really, as an interviewer, I appreciate it and it makes people stand out because no one does it anymore. So if you can follow up with either a personal thank you letter written out or an email, perfect, does that make sense? So um, these are just some very, very, very quick tips on interviewing and being proactive for an interview. I don't wanna take a whole lot of time, I've already taken a good 40 minutes, um, but I do want you to know that I would love to set up a mock interview with you if that would make you feel comfortable uh, or talk interviews with you um, and give you some you know, one-on-one -on -one examples or tips that you might need. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me. Again, Marcy Ryder, Director of Work-Based Learning. Uh, my office is on the Cleveland campus. Uh, I'm in the Career Ed Building E106C. Feel free to stop by. Uh, I'm in and out a lot of industry, but feel free if I'm in here, come in and chit chat with me. Again, my email is mreiter, M-R-E-I-T-E-R, -E -E at clevelandstatecc.edu, um, or try me on my office phone, is 423-614-8718. Um, and if you have any questions at all, um, or you want to um, reach out to me in any way, please don't hesitate to do just that. So I appreciate you tuning in with me. Sorry, I'm not doing a song and dance stream. It's a lot of talking, um, but I hope you got a couple tips that you can take with you on your first or your next interview. Um, and I hope to see, see you soon on campus. Have a great one, guys.